good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Just got to start the thing. Okay. Um, just for the record, I'm Ed WX2R. Thank you very much. Sir. And I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Uh, this is the fourth annual. Over here. The fourth annual, I think. Uh, FLARC member survey. Okay, Tom's giving me some pointers here. I'm trying to be really profound for the tape. Okay. But I'll do it. That's good, right? Okay. You should have okay. put an X on the floor. Should have like put an real. X on the next time. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, this was, you know, it was done in January of 2019. The publicity committee is the sponsor of this. Uh, tonight's agenda is, I think, a little bit different from what we've done in the past. If, if you remember the last couple of uh, years, uh, we've run a little bit late, and there's been, I guess, a lot of discussion that was really back ended. Yeah, and this is really your discussion, I'm not necessarily mine, because it's really your what you've said, okay, as part of the member survey. So, what I want to do is just basically an overview for the data. There's not as many visuals as there were last year, although it's just as long a questionnaire. Uh, the deck will be available once we're done. Um, I just, you know, and then at the end, just a quick summary and some observations. Uh, as sort of the consultant on the project, quote unquote, that type of thing. And then just sort of a general discussion, uh, really, because there, I guess there's some issues for us that we need to talk about as we go forward, okay? particularly since we've gone from about 60 people three, three and a half years ago to 110 as of tonight. 110 paid, okay. Right, okay. <coughs> I mean, so, and obviously we're larger than that in terms of where we get everybody in. So, but first off, to get started, I just 102, thank you. Okay, I was quite amazed we have 102 people, okay, who filled out this survey during the month of January. Uh, and that's really credit to you guys. Did I prod you a little bit? Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, more than usual. Yeah, but I, but I think it's right. You know, no more than usual. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Okay, but I, but I think it, it really does matter, you know, in terms of hearing all the voices that we can, particularly a club that's as active and is growing as fast as this one. So just very, very quickly, you know, we have 102 respondents. Okay, which is up from 88 in 2018, 55 in 2017, and 35 in 2016. So you can see it's a close row. Okay, we've gotten more people to participate. Uh, the open rate, this was an email survey, except for 11 of you who I buttonholed the first week of January with a paper questionnaire. The open rate was 70%, the click-through rate was 56%. Uh, we conducted it digitally, there were three month riders, although it might have seemed like more, there were just three. Uh, the field period was during January. We had 43 questions. The response rate was 75%. Okay, when you looked at the entire email list, and you'll see in a second, we didn't, some people obviously opted out, that type of thing. The completion rate on the survey, was it a long survey? No. No, no. 17 <coughs> minutes goes by fast when you're having fun, right? So, you know, that obviously, you know, it was you know, 17 minutes, about 88% completed it. Okay, and, and that actually totals to about 29 member hours that you spent working for me filling out this little question. So I was really happy, okay? That's it. In terms of just, you know, how did the sample settle? We had 66% complete, 66% uh, of the total list, the total members that we have on file on December 31st complete the survey. We had about 22% where we had an email, but there was no response, there was a bounce, or there was an opt-out. And there's about 12% where we had, in a sense, there was no valid email coming back to us, okay? We just had 136 people. Okay, that we were able to email to on the balance list. Okay, on on January <coughs> first. So and actually, that sort of parallels what we're seeing now in terms of renewals. Right. So I mean, we've got 110, which is better than my response rate. Okay. So we know that we have about 153 on the file. Yeah. So I mean, so that's good. Okay, in terms of where we're going. So just some quick takeaways before we get into the data. While the club has grown rapidly. Believe it or not, a majority of people in this club still want it to continue to grow, okay, both in size and in reputation. You would think that 150, I'm doing 130, 150, and you'd say, boy, I didn't have enough. That's not necessarily the case. Okay, there's, there's clearly high satisfaction in terms of the current direction of the club, where the club is going. Um, the reason, in terms of why you, you come to this club is that the most important reason is that you stay connected with other people. Okay, it's the networking aspect and how I stay connected with others. That matters, okay. The challenge, okay, is I think we've seen is creating more time for the club to be open, okay, aside from Friday nights, and it's a clear desire for many members of this club, okay, is that there's just a lot of people here on a Friday night, okay, and I'd like more time to be able to, you know, do things with the club, and we'll talk a little bit about more about that uh, as we go further. 
Interesting point here that's different from other years is having more projects and invite and items that involve learning, okay, are very, very important to members, particularly members who have joined this club within the last year or two years. Okay, primarily younger, okay, not necessarily extras, okay, who are coming here to learn, not necessarily just to network. A big problem, okay, which you'll see, particularly in terms of how the membership has grown, is that, um, this sounds a little strange, but it sounds like the newspaper business. The problem, problem with the newspaper business was always there was no time to read, right, that type of thing. Here, the question for this club is find me more time so that I can be involved. Okay, I'd love to do more things with the club, but I just haven't got enough time. Okay, something called life gets in the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That ever happened to you? Right, you see a lot of head shaking, right? Okay, that type of thing. And one question that we asked, there was a lot of questions that I, when I asked in the fall uh, about questions that you'd like to see at another questionnaire. One question that came up was, you know, willingness to make a voluntary contribution so that we can help do things beyond the budget, extend the budget, that type of thing. And there's a majority of survey respondents who'd be willing to make an additional voluntary, uh, monetary contribution to improve equipment, antennas, you know, that kind of thing that we, that we talked about in terms of the club meetings, okay? Just a quick, a few fun facts about us is that four in 10 members of this club belong only to this club and not to any other club. Half claim to be currently active among those who responded, okay? Your definition of active is probably different than mine. You know, that, that's kind of interesting in terms of, you know, sort of a roster of who, of who said what. One in four said that they'd be active participants in taking advantage of the club being open on a day other than Fridays. Saturdays and Thursdays are the top preferences. And voila, Thursdays, Thursdays. Thursdays have happened. Okay, that type of thing. Most are interested in antennas and how they work, followed by activities about computers, software, and kit construction. Okay. Flark member interests are highly diverse, and that goes a little bit to the handout that I have uh, given you, okay? Is that, as you can see, we asked about a wide variety of topics, okay? When you look in terms of how it clusters, okay, the average number of members by interest topic is about 30, okay? The highest was, I think, 56, and the low was 16, okay? Lead business, that type of thing. So, I mean, spread across this, hams are interested in a lot, club members are interested in a lot of different things. You know, I guess what we sort of point out, you know, why some, you know, why do we never grow the, you know, the Friday speaker series? Because there's a lot of different interests. Some months I'm interested, some months I'm not. That type of thing. So, anyway, who are we? We're old. Okay. <laughs> One in seven members are under 50. Three in 10 are 70 or older. Uh, we've got more people over 80 than we've got under 30. Does that look like most clubs? Yeah, yeah it does. Sadly to say it is, and you know, having gone around and seeing a lot of clubs, um, we're pretty young compared to a couple of others you know, that I've seen. Uh, interestingly enough, when you look at new members in this club, as the club has grown, the median age of membership of this club has come down, okay, which I think is a really good sign. Okay? A club that's getting younger okay, is better than a club, I would argue, that's getting older and tithing out. Okay? You come from a technical background. Two-thirds say that they do. Okay, and your definition of what a technical background was Whatever you think it is, okay? I know that I'm not, so I'm part of the one third. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Yep. Thanks. Okay. License class. About half half of all members are extras. Just one in ten are technicians. Okay. That's not different from any other clubs that I've seen. Okay. I, you know, particularly when you look in terms of the challenges that uh, anybody went to Ham Hamburg University. Okay. A couple, right? They, the, the presentation that Howard gave. Okay, the new uh, CEO of the league. You know, as the fact is, is that techs are the biggest challenge that we have. Is that when you look in terms of total licenses, the, the new license numbers were out today, by the way. Okay, is that there's never been a higher number of techs than there are now. The question is to converting them to upgrade, to get them more involved, and from a lead business perspective, is to convert them. The leads are, the lead members are really a challenge, you know, that type of thing. So, what bands do you operate most often? The answer looks this, very much the same as last year, HF, okay, followed by VHF and UHF. About one in 10 of us say that we're not active. Okay. Um, interesting, the, the question that I did not include here is, you know, what bands do you use? Okay, and actually more people say that they use VHF than they use HF. Okay, and I'm showing you here is the other question that says, what do you use most, most often? And that's primarily VHF, or HF rather, okay? When you look in terms of how Band usage breaks out by license type. Again, the right-hand column is the number that we had here. Okay, so 46, 30, 12, and 11. Okay, 
when you look, extras are obviously the most prolific users of HF. Technicians, likely, okay, in terms of privileges and everything else, um, are not necessarily you know, either on VHF or UHF. The biggest challenge that we have here is that a third are not active. Okay, you see, and obviously that's a challenge is that I got a license, what do I do with it? Okay, and how we get more people involved. This is no different than we had last year. Okay, the question is, is that we've just got more people involved in this pool right now. I can see I gotta get 8% of people to buy a bow tie. That's exactly it. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it, but because once you get a radio, you're on the air, right. yeah, that type of thing. So um, do you operate, you know, how do you operate? About half of us say that we operate both home and mobile. 28% uh, say we operate only from a home station, 15% from only from a mobile station, 3% uh, probably upstairs right now from only from the farm station. Okay, and then there's 16% who just you know, say other things in terms of just sort of how they operate. This was a question that was asked by one of the members that we included this year. What operating awards have you achieved? Um, about one in five of us, okay, who responded to the survey said that they've got with all states, okay? 18% DXCC, 16% WAC, 8% CQ uh, worked all zones. Um, Larry's in all of these. Right. <laughs> okay. And some that aren't even listed. Pardon? It's, no, and obviously, yeah, these, are, these are the ones that, these are just the big ones, you know, that type of thing. So I think this was a really good question, particularly when you tie it against condos usage. You know, in a little bit. But anyway, this is, you know, we've asked different things over the years, and this was a great volunteer question to add in as well. So, how often are we on the air? How many people are on the air this week? Just out of curiosity. Okay, that's about right. So it's just look, okay, just in an average week. About 10% say that they're not active, okay, so not on the air. And that parallels the 11% from the other side. About 41% say that they're on less than an hour a day on average, okay, about seven, less than seven hours a week. Uh, about another third say that they're on a little bit more than an hour a day on average. You can see, so you put yourself into that bucket in terms of where you are. And again, regardless of band, it's just, you know, how often are you on the air? There's only about 2% of us uh, that are on three hours a day uh, or more. And that's probably Larry too. He's sort of watching. <laughs> okay. So where is he now? He's on the air, you know, that type of thing. What's interesting is that if you just you just do a quick you know breakout in terms of just all the um, you know all the breaks, is that we get about seven the Flark members spend about seven hundred hours a week on the air operating. That's a little bit higher than last year. We had about five ninety six. Okay. So I mean so there's more operating more members so you would expect to see more people on the air as well too. So <laughs> Any questions on this? Good so far? Okay. Yeah. What are we interested in? Okay, this is, again, what are your primary areas of interest? Okay. No different than last year. 62% said they were interested in field day and other similar events. Uh, if we could ever get a turnout, okay, of about 30, 150 people, okay. You know. uh, DXing, 47%, computers and ham radio. Volunteering in terms of public service, community work, that type of thing. Um, digital operations, contesting, building antennas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just, you know, just sort of running down, just so we got the entire array of data. You know, being a mentor, software-defined radios, uh, packet and ready summits on the air, traffic handling, you know, more specialty, QRP, satellite communications, uh, availability equipment, you know, and just sort of, and Raspberry Pi, uh, and just sort of the fact that they're more niche uh, areas as opposed to general operating practices. And those are primary areas of interest. What are you interested in learning more about? Okay, and this is sort of the driver, you know, in terms of looking ahead to the rest of the year in terms of speakers, you know, and also in terms of looking at sort of activities, you know, I guess for the club going forward. Clearly, antennas are, are regardless of who you are or what you mode, sort of, it's, it's not the equipment, it's how you get the damn thing out, signal out of the air, right? You know, and so it's using antennas and how they work. Software used by hands, okay? You know, I'd like to know more about different programs, things that you're using that I don't necessarily know about. Kit building and equipment construction, okay, is a high interest item. Propagation, how it affects the bands, particularly in a uh, poor DX environment. Field day, club participation, echo link, et cetera, et cetera. Just looking down in terms of, you know, just the other areas of activity. Satellites, experimentation. Notice the right order seemed to change, okay, in terms of not only what you're interested in, but what you want to learn more about. Now, if you look at your sheets, this is where um, all the data that you have, okay, is coming from. And things that you're interested more about. 
So what I did is I took everybody's answers, okay, my interest topic, coming off of this question, and I broke it down by call sign, just like we did last year. So you've got people, I've got people clustered together in terms of their areas of interest, okay? With me? So if we're looking at for other people who are interested in QRP, QRP, Steve? Yes, I'm totally mm -hmm. about that. QRP. Okay, we're likely kindred, okay? We're kindred groups, okay? Kindred groups, okay? Yeah, I mean, look, we should be getting together to say, look, you know, like maybe we could do something regarding QRP, or QRP activity. You know, satellites, Arduino. I mean, whatever you want to do, experimentation. Finding other people. At least we know where people's interests are in a club of 130 people where there are a lot of interests. Okay, sort of how do you put people together? So okay. you can have subclubs. Subclubs, yes. Special interest groups, okay, is really the key. Okay, last year we talked about it. We didn't do much about it, okay? This year, particularly the fact that when you, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but you see that people are interested in doing things. Okay, having now that you know where people are that want to do things like you do, okay, that's a natural affinity I would think in terms of building groups out, okay, to be able to share experiences and learn more from each other about a specific topic. Question came from a specific member, okay, in terms of how interested you are specifically with digital applications on, on, on HF or VHF. Someone's in this room, okay? About 26% uh, are extremely interested, okay, in terms of looking at HF and VHF. I can break that out separately because that's not what I'm attached to the other questions. And another 51% are somewhat interested. So you've got at least a quarter of the club who say that I'm more, inter I'm, I'm really interested in terms of specifically with digital applications on uh, HF or VHF. With me? Okay, it's a really good question that we've added as well, okay, in terms of looking at overall interests. What's your interest in contesting? This is a question that also came from one of the members, okay? In looking, we did it on a five point scale, okay? Where a five was a high interest item and a one was little or no interest. The weighted average is about 2.71. You'd be the researcher, what does it tell you? Uh, that's higher than average. <clears throat> well, the average, the midpoint would be? 2.3. Well, 2.5 to three, right, okay, that's right. 2.5 to 3 on the midpoint, midpoint scale. Actually, when you look at it overall, there's not that much interest, particularly when you look at breaking it out. Should this club be a contest club? It should be a serious contest club. This has always been a general interest club. You know, quite the follow-up question was, how serious should this club be regarding whether or not you're a contester? There's about 10 people who said it should be a serious contest club. Another 14 is, ah, eh, maybe, okay. But there's about 16%. Most people, you know, the midpoint of the sample is that it doesn't really matter. So take it for what it is. I mean, when you look in terms of the number of people who get involved in contests here, that's probably the way it plays back in terms of the overall numbers, in terms of the overall interest. With me? Okay. How do I feel about Florida? Well, I guess a lot of you are going to leave the room. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. okay. The purpose of the club on Fridays, okay? Fridays are important for staying together with other members, about 39%. Okay, say that it's important for networking, staying together, okay? 30% say that it's important for the content. I come here so about, about, to learn about amateur radio, and what I can learn from others about amateur radio. About 7% say, you know what, Friday sun, doesn't really matter to me being a member of Florida. Okay, 1% is saying I come to the meetings but not really interested. It's the one person. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a little bit more, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's one, it's one, it's one, yeah, it's one. Right. Okay. It's one. Um, 17% just said it's something else, okay? If I look compared to last year, there is some differences, okay? The red is this year, okay, and 2018 is in blue, okay? Is that as we've grown members, okay, and the age of the club has gotten younger, okay, is that there's a little bit more interest in terms of what I can learn about amateur radio, okay? Also the fact that it's not that important to me, okay? But we get a small difference, but the big drop is obviously in terms of looking at staying connected with others, particularly being a new member, okay, that type of thing. So, I mean, that is different, okay? Are you active in the club? About 30% said that they are. Again, again, your definition of whether you're active or not is in your head, okay? I didn't put a definition of what active means. If, it's, if you think you're active, then you are. Um, about 46%, about half say, you know, I'd like to be more active in the club, but other things in my life prevent it. You know, I've got kids. XYL. Okay. Other things. Okay. 
Former said, I said, I'd like to be active in the club, but no one asks me to do anything or I'm too frustrated to ask. And that end is four. Okay. So, I mean, so there's four people here that we need to address. Okay, in terms of the fact that if you're not being asked, what do you want to do? Okay. Now the 10% say that, you know, I'm not active in the club and that's okay. I'm a member, but I'd say that I'm not active at all. Okay. So that's where we are in terms of that. How does that look compared to last year? Okay. Again, 2019 is in red, 2018 is in blue. Okay. Is that as the club has grown, there's there are fewer people saying that they're active in the club. Okay. Is that new members have not necessarily, you know, I claim that they have the same level of activeness in the club as as in the previous years. Okay, but we've also got an increase in terms of the fact that life prevents things that I want to do. Okay, particularly because newer members are a bit younger, okay, than, than the existing base. There's a little bit more, fewer retirees simply put in that pool, okay. Uh, and basically the other pieces that I'm a member to say I'm not active at all, okay, is the fact that I've joined the club, but I ne haven't necessarily done anything if I look at the fact that young, newer membership is driving those numbers. Question, question so far? I think the Come. benchmark has probably moved in what's being active because this club does more and more and more every year. That's correct. That's correct. So people might be as active, it's just that yeah, the standard is moving. There's more to do. And yeah. that's right. And the club has changed. Yeah, Absolutely. Maybe, maybe the definition of what is active has changed a little bit. Right? right. As a new member, your definition of active is different than somebody who's been a club member for 15, 20 years right. and has gotten involved in that's obviously the subjective nature of it, but nevertheless, it is different. Okay, and as the club has grown, we've seen some variation. We've gone back four years, it looks a lot different, because this is a trend question that we've asked every year. The club are open some other evenings, perhaps on a Saturday, including its current Friday night schedule. How active participant would you be? Okay, about 22 people, okay, about one in five, said that they would be an active participant. Okay, in terms of looking at what nights you would be interested or what days you'd be interested in, uh, again, here you could pick multiple days if you recall from the questionnaire. But again, here Saturday was the lead day followed by Thursday, and voila, okay, Thursday became the operative day for us for a lot of different reasons. Okay. But again, you know, just we're looking at a pool of about 22 people actively saying that where they would get involved, and another 38 to 40 people saying that they would be a casual participant going forward. How satisfied are you with Lark as a club and the general direction it's taken? This is kind of interesting. I, I do when I work with any type of client. I ask this question. It's called net promoter score. Um, is that you know what you want to be is you want to be in the nines and tens. Okay, life is good when you're a nine and ten. Uh, you really don't want to be below um, a, a six. Okay, overall. What in terms of getting a score, you see in the beginning is that you take your nines and tens, you throw away your sevens and eights, and subtract and subtract your ones uh, through sixes. Okay, to get a net promoter score, you see that for a second. But you've got about 43% who are very satisfied with the club and the direction that it's taking, another 21% who give it a nine. Okay, so you got about, what, 60, two thirds. Okay, uh, saying they're, they're gonna give it either a nine or 10. The weighted average is 8.62. Damn, that's good. Okay, for a club that's growing real fast with a lot of pressures involved. The net satisfaction score hasn't changed at all. One point is nothing. Depends what we're looking at where we are. So the fact is, is that you know when you were when you were at 110 people, okay, which is where we were at. 150. No, 150 now. But the year before was not 110. Uh, I think a little bit lower than that. A little bit lower than that. Okay, so you're still getting the same level of satisfaction. Okay, what is different? Okay, oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm wrong slide. Okay, but here's where I am. Primary strengths of Flark. Okay, um, knowledge. Okay, like just look here in terms of numbers on the bottom. The members here bring a lot of knowledge, okay? It's a club, it's really active, they've got a lot of interest. I can learn things here. They're friendly, they're willing to share, okay? There's, there's great facilities, there's test equipment, there's guest, there's guest speakers, there's operating equipment, okay? All those things sort of play into what the, what the primary strengths are. If I look in terms of what the weaknesses are, the biggest number that I get, obviously you don't get as many people who criticize as you do getting accolades, but yeah, my, the biggest, Biggest, and this is the uh, responding counts, is 17 people said, you know what, <coughs> this club has no weaknesses, it's good. <coughs> That's nice to hear, okay? We'd like to see some improvement. Biggest problems over current space, opening more days or nights, have more learning, more projects, okay? Allow more people to use the stations, 
Okay, anecdotal comments, in fact, I cannot get on the air. Okay. Um, allow more members to participate in activities. Okay, which is interesting because you tend to think they're open to all, but there are some people who, said, who seem to feel, okay, and again, perception is reality in a lot of this stuff, that you need permission to be able to participate. Okay, four people said they haven't had been a member long enough to say, and four people said something else okay, that we couldn't really categorize. Okay, what direction? What should be the direction of the club for the next couple of years? This is, for me, you know, as a researcher, I was really quite surprised by this, particularly if you listen for a lot of different comments, okay? From a, under 110 to 150, you know, there's a lot of questions about how big do you grow, okay, that type of thing, okay? 68%, seven in 10, said, looking ahead for the next couple of years, the club should still grow both in size and its reputation. It's one of the best clubs. Get bigger than what you are. Hello, right? Okay. 16% say you should only grow in reputation. It's big enough now in size as it is. 3% said it should just be a local hobby club, no different or special from anything else in the area. 13% have a lot of other things to say. Most, but most of it goes back to the 68% in terms of the fact that growth is good, that type of thing. How did that compare with the last couple of years? Actually, not much compared to last year. Okay, we had 68% say it should get bigger. We had 67% of 110 people, or a little less, right, say that it should get bigger. Okay, and where were we two years ago? We don't have any firm thing. Yeah, 80 or 70 or 60, you know, I mean, whatever it was, okay. Yeah. I mean, they were still, I mean, when we said, when these people said we should grow, and we did, okay, even at higher levels, people were saying you should get bigger, okay. And this is my guess, just from having one around, is that this is the largest club now in terms of paid membership in the state. Paid members of Carl? Okay. Carl and I have the Plowston discussion all the time. I'm keeping you honest. Pardon? I'm keeping you honest. Keeping me honest. <laughs> that's true. Right? Well, as you should, as a joint member. But this could yeah. become the biggest club. Exactly. Exactly. It's and it's it truly it's has the potential. You're this club. Yeah. Yeah. But in <laughs> terms of paying, I believe so. You know, just regarding that. Okay. So, and obviously, here's the difference. But, but I'm just quite surprised. Okay. The fact is, is that even at 150. You know, or 130 paid, where we end up. It's still, there's a lot of desire to have the club continue to grow, okay? Both in size and in reputation. What's interesting, okay, is if you break it down by how long you've been a club member, you see some differences, okay? If you've been a club member for a long time, 11 years or more, okay, you know, it's about only about 56% say it should still grow, but even there, half of them say, okay, you should still grow both in size and reputation. Okay, 31 percent enough is enough. Reputation only, that type of thing. Your younger members, okay, if you look at one year or less, or if you look at one to three years, which is you know a sizable percentage of the club, as we'll see at the end, um, you know, say that you know we should continue to grow both in size and reputation. There are your drivers, even though they're less likely to be involved, okay, in terms of where we are, less active, okay, but nevertheless their perception of the club is that I belong to it now. It's a really good club and should continue to grow. Well, yeah, they are. Small, they're, 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 so yeah. a small number will make a tremendous Well, that's, that's right, Rod. Right. Okay, we'll, dr we'll drive the percentage, but still, it's a large enough percentage that they can drive it. It's not a small sample. It's not statistical. Okay. It's, not, it's, not a, it's not a truly small sample, though. Okay. Um, if I were just looking at text alone, it would be. Okay, or age would be. But, um, again, volunteer question. Clark is not a nonprofit organization it's sponsored by the Borough of Fairlawn. Therefore, it's limited to funds that it needs to operate from sources such as dues, gifts, and the annual auction. Would you be willing to contribute to capital equipment fund to help upgrade the equipment inside the station, as well as further improve the antennas in 2019? Really specific in terms of looking at what you do with money. This contribution would be in addition to your annual dues and would be completely voluntary, okay? We have 56 people say yes. Okay, beyond the dues, I'm willing to contribute money, okay, to help do things for this club. I like that. Did they say how much? No. We didn't ask how much. We didn't ask how much. But I'll tell you. Okay, I put I put a few numbers to it. Okay, which you'll see at the end. If I like Mr. President. So right. So anyway, we'll come back. Okay. There's an active net on W two NPT. This is another volunteer question on Monday nights, but most of the time the repeater is inactive. True. Okay. What might you suggest to stimulate more activity on the? What types of activities, interests, or times or days might encourage you to participate in the computer? We didn't get much, okay? This is one of the few questions that, like last year, you saw a lot of verbatims.
just in terms of time, I, this is the only important one I think I really should have names, is that there's some commonality here, create a local contest or award program for users of the machine, sort of have, you know, sort of have an incentive to have you go on, on the repeater. Works all four, you know, you'll award for working all four officers, how's that? Work 10 four members, et cetera, that kind of thing. Code practice over the repeater with CW classes, that kind of thing, a lot of clubs do that. Short practice sessions for emergency communications <coughs> that race these other areas. Weekly DX bowl discussions, CW practice again, special interest discussions. Maybe a swap shop technical or CW net, having an net during the daytime hours of the retired members who may not be able to get on the club at night. Uh, or a drive time net, interestingly enough. A lot of clubs do that, I think, just in terms of availability. Um, or, you know, again, CW class or a, or a, or a slow scan TV net, that kind of thing. I mean, so there's, so those are some of the ideas. Okay, that we need just you know in terms of what we do with it to build it out. But nevertheless, you know, if we want to get more activity, sometimes you know the members have all the questions or all the answers and all the money. So, what other clubs do you belong to? Okay, um, interestingly here, I mean this we're we're a gifted club in the fact that we've got about uh, forty-seven, nearly half of our membership is exclusive, does not belong to any other club but this one. Okay, my heart belongs to Flark, you know that type of thing. Um, about 53% say I belong to Flark, but I belong to one other club, or I belong to other clubs. Interestingly enough, is that most of the duplication comes from? Where are my Barrow members and BCFMA members? Raise your hand. There you go. Okay, so that, you know, there's your reality. Okay, that type of thing, as it's, as, as it's always been true, is that there's a lot of crossover between the two clubs. Uh, and only about 15% of our membership say that they belong to this club, but they belong <coughs> to some of and was eight over an elk counted in this? No, it's so not a club. Okay. okay, that's not a club. You had to belong to a club, and I'm glad you asked. Um, I, you know what? Did I take it out? I did. I did. I actually, I, you know, I did ask about the about the clubs you belong to. Okay, uh, you know, and there's and there's the usual, you know, suspects: Chestnut Ridge, um, Frankfurt, and Frankfurt. Yeah, actually, Frankfurt, other than other than Barra, okay, was was the leading club uh, overall. Carl, are we at least half? Oh yes, good question. Good question. And this was a this was a discussion that came up at another club the other night. Um, is that if you I didn't show the data here, but the number is eighty two percent. Okay, of those who answered the survey. Okay, it's not the long tail of everyone who's in the club. Who I suspect is a no. Okay, or small smaller than half. Okay, but obviously to retain special service club membership. Okay, is that you need to have. It's over 50% of the year. I think it might even be higher, okay, for, for special service designation. Yeah, is that there is criteria. Okay, for special service, I think it's for affiliation. For affiliation, but also for special it's service. Pretty cool to maintain. Yeah, it, is that you do need, but, but the number here is 82%, okay. Um, so it's, it's a safe assumption if you're general and up, you're probably an ARRL. That's correct, yeah. And, and yeah, actually, techs are the least likely, okay, which right. is also the least challenge going forward. So, how long have you been a FLARC member? <clears throat> About 14% under a year. Okay, so that's 14, Ron. That comes, to, comes back to your sample size. Uh, about 40%, one to three years. Interesting. I mean, this looks a lot different than it did a couple of years ago. Okay, where you didn't have very many new members, you had a lot of forever members. Okay, now the 11 to 20 year people, okay, are only represent about 12% of the sample, and another 8%, okay, more than 20 years. So, so you're well, 10, or, 10 or above, for sake of argument, is about 2 in 10. So there's more younger members, and then there are sort of old timers, okay? Which increasingly will drive the direction of this club, I would argue, just as time goes on. With me? Good so far? Good, all right. And correlation between age of the member and tenure? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, that, that's a say, just on, on a premise that uh, newer members are younger. Oh, okay. okay, is that the longer the membership you've been here, you're older and you've been here for, you know, that kind of thing. So, so why did you join Floor? Okay, this was asked of people, this was asked of people, let me go back, who are three years or less. So the 14% in blue, the 40% in one to three, okay? Why'd you join? We're nice people. You may not think so, but we're nice people. That's right. There's always exceptions. Personal exception. Okay. Um, they, have a physical, they have a physical station, or they have multiple stations, that type of thing. Um, it's not the highest, though. It's just one of the listed items. They have good equipment. People play back new antennas. Voila. You get new gear, people play it back. Okay? VE sessions, VE sessions brought me into this club. Okay? 
took a VD section here, I joined, and that's great, okay? The programs are an introduction. They have regular programs, they have good speakers, I joined the club. They have smart technical members, okay? And, that's come, and that was a really big item, okay? Is that you people are all smart, okay? And others can learn from you, okay? And that's a good reason. Uh, it was recommended by others. The, the club, this is a good club to join. It's got a good reputation. It's a really good club. Some people say it's local. That's why I'm here. It's Fairlawn, you know, that type of thing. What's, and I think what's really interesting when you look at the verbatims is that I wanted to learn about ham radio. Okay. Okay. Help me gain knowledge. Help me make friends. Help me overcome uncertainty. Okay. Yeah. Were you a new ham? Were you afraid? Okay, that type of thing. Okay. It's those types of things where you build camaraderie that comes back to friendly people. Okay. Some clubs do not welcome others. Okay. This club apparently has the perception that it's good in terms of welcoming others. I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, obviously, and other things that smart technical members help me when I'm stuck. Okay, that type of thing. So, I mean, those are those are really good reasons why you join. How long have you been a ham? One in five in this club now have been hams for three years or less. That's an opportunity piece to get more people. In. Okay, is that they're new hams, they're excited. Now, the first couple years on the year, what's the most excited day? It's like buying a boat, right? The most excited day is your first few something. Okay. I've never used that one. But no, okay. But you know, but, it, but it's those types of things. Okay, when you look, okay, is that we've got fifteen percent of been for fifty or more years. There's a lot of experience. Okay, and that ties back. Okay, and when you look at me, what four and ten, right? Twenty three plus fifteen. I've been hands for thirty five years or more. Right? How many here sort of fit that, pro that profile? Right. Why'd you become a hand? Okay, again, this is for the three years or less. You know what? I was interested in learning about science. Okay, it's the generic, it's, it's about electronics, it's about radio. <coughs> we forget the obvious sometimes. Why did you want to do it, okay? Yeah. It's in, I'm interested in those things. How many crossover things? Like people that are interested in SWL got in that path, okay? And then I think they were here, right? CB Shore, that type of thing. Um, and there's a lot of guys that talk about astronomy. You know, that type of thing. Science and technology that brought me in, that type of thing. I just always wanted to be an hand. Okay, how many people, when they come to VD sessions, say, you know what, I always wanted to do this. Okay, and at the time of my life, I've got time, I've got availability, I may have some money, okay, you know, that I can do this now. I want to talk to people, okay? Hands by nature are somewhat introverted. One thing they like to do is talk to people. Might be from their shy, but they like to talk to people. Okay? Emergency services. Our family friend got me interested. Okay? I knew somebody that was a hand, somebody told me, okay, that type. Emergency services, MCOM first responders. These are a lot of the techs, okay, not necessarily from our data, okay. The challenge here, this also lead challenge, is that when you come on from this from this particular perspective, is how you hold on to them and get them interested to upgrade, okay. And this is the CV shortwave. This is an interesting demographic simply because who's in that group? Older, Older people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, although I had lunch with a ham the other day. Um, who's in the who's in the business? Actually, uh, Rich Moses said from CQ, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Rich was and we were talking about CB. Okay, if I take Icom, Kenwood, right, Yezu, and Cobra, who has the greater sales over the last five years? <coughs> Cobra. Okay, there's more than twice as much money in the CB market. Okay, than there is in the amateur radio market. Okay. Think about it, okay? The guy in advanced specialties is making a heck of a lot, I shouldn't say that. The guy in advanced specialties is making a heck of a lot of money selling CB because it's a really big piece, okay, of the business, okay? Interestingly enough, when I was, I don't want to do an anecdote, but I, I, think, I think it's interesting. When I was at RSGB in London, I sat with a guy who was involved in AMSAC, and we ended up talking about CB. Then in, in, in the UK, CB is still the entry path to getting into amateur radio. Here, it's far more difficult. You don't see people who tell you all over the top that they got involved in this CB. You gotta really find them and bring them in. But nevertheless, I mean, you know, and Rich and I were talking about the other day, is that there's probably a latent opportunity you can track them now. Carl? Just a thought, maybe next time you do it, if you put in FRS instead of CB or one of the things. You, you, you can see CB. something different, see that's right. You can micro center in all kinds of places. That's right, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's a really good point. Steve, I, I see you were thinking a about A little off topic, but. In that CB marketplace, 
Are the truckers buying it or are people <laughs> non-truckers buying it? Let me, uh, I got the, this is, to, I, I won't, go ahead. I have the answer actually. Go ahead. The CV guys, they tell you to buy a Yusuf. <laughs> it's interesting from a marketing always, standpoint. Seventy said that. Rich was telling me that. Yeah. I, I forget who the guys are. Point about. There's no the requirements now for CV trading. None. None. Don't go to Walmart and buy a ring. Don't go to Walmart and buy a ring. Yeah, but nevertheless, I mean, this is kind of interesting. Yeah. That was very close. Yeah. Just, it's kind of interesting because it's really off topic. But nevertheless, if you're ever going to say, I mean, where's there a hidden market for things? You know, is that this may be one of the questions? Is how you find it. Okay, but not many of us have been able to talk, you know, talk into it. But it's really came up in conversation. I want a mobile communications capabilities. That's how I see me, right? I want to talk on the radio, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Others, other organizations that I belong to encourage me to become a ham. You know, and my career has been in science and technology. Interesting, more than six in ten of us say that we were involved in the tech field, but only about twelve percent said that my career got me into ham radio. Okay, it was something else that got me there. Other than. Oh, but on the other way around, ham radio got many of us into our Exactly family. right. Okay, exactly yeah. right. So there's the flip side of that, okay, from one to the other. So, if you want to any of the following, okay, just I asked you about Racy, Skywarn, Sir, Aries, First Responder, Red Cross. Uh, the biggest group here is Racy's, even without uh, setting, or obviously now with Racy's in the club. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Skywarn uh, served at 20%, Aries at 16% without Fairmont, because this was asked before that. We set up an Aries group here now, by the way, in Fairmont. Um, Red Cross is 3%. About half of us say that we're not involved uh, in terms of any of those ser service operations, organizations. Takeaways, okay, from 2019, okay. We've grown a lot, okay, but there's still a real strong desire to continue to grow this club over its size and reputation, okay. Can't say that enough. To me, that was the biggest surprise. You know, you sort of say, ah, how big is enough? Okay, but people say push on, you know, that type of thing. It remains not about managing capacity, but having too many. W2NPT, Rich here. We need people on the net, right? Okay. It's about managing capacity of having more potentially engaged members. There are people who want to participate, people who want to learn. Okay, how do you, how do you trade that time off? Okay, look, in terms of looking at the capacity beyond the fact that we've got a full house on Friday night, people that want to operate the radios, want to work on projects, want to use the test bench, well, you come in here and sometimes it's just too full okay, to be able to do things. It's managing capacity in terms of how we do things, okay? For many people, particularly newer members, it's putting active back into radio. I thought this was the cleverest thing I thought of in this whole presentation is that it's radioactive. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay. But it's really it's really getting people more involved in projects and doing things, okay? Focusing on projects and learning. I can learn things here, I can build things here, I can expand my knowledge. There's a real articulated demand for it in this club. Okay, increase member involvement, okay? Sometimes we complain that it's the same people doing the same things, okay? It's sort of a classic parade of 80, you know, 20% do 80%. Okay, there are some people who, who anecdotally mention the fact that the few are a little bit of a quick. Okay, no clicks survive in clubs, okay, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, so it's sort of what we do to be able to get more people involved, okay, and, and, and become more inclusive, okay, in terms of growing people. Create more available operating time on W2 NPT, okay. We say, well, there may not be anybody here, but there's still, there's still some people who say, I can't operate the radios, okay, when I come in here. Uh, Clark is clearly from the standpoint of inside as well as on the outside. Clark is becoming a powerful brand based on its friendliness, its involvement, its programs, and its growth. There are uh, at least 15 people who in some form or another on this questionnaire said, this is the best damn club around. Okay? And that's a cool thing when you hear it, okay? particularly you know, in, terms, in terms of people who've been involved in terms of really growing this. There's a, and there's obviously a balance between engaging new members and retaining their interest and the participation of long-term members. You know, one of the things in terms of looking at membership, okay, is being able to say, I mean, who hasn't been coming? Okay, that may have been longer term members. We want to understand that. Okay, because we don't want you to drop out for reasons that we can't improve. Okay, by the same thing too, if you're a younger member here or a newer member, not younger in age, but a newer member in terms of uh, your, your sort of time in the club, is that we don't want your interest to wane because we haven't been able to meet what you need to help in terms of growing this club and being more, far more active family. 
Well, so what next? Okay, and this obviously becomes the discussion part is it's only 10 to 8. Okay, it's to sort of find ways to maximize the value of the club for those who have little time to experience it. Okay, for people who say, you know what, I haven't, I really want to get involved, but how do I find more time to do it? Or how do I find the opportunity? To me, if we can help some of those people by either creating things of interest that pull you away from other things that you do, okay, or create more time and time opportunities to get you involved, that's something that's important. <coughs> I need new volunteers and give them something to do. You saw that there were a few people that said, I haven't asked. Okay, I really want to volunteer, okay? Yes, okay, the answer is yes. We need to find those people and give them something. Um, ID and house speakers. We asked this last year, we didn't ask it this year. Okay, and get them involved in terms of speaking, teaching, and sharing. Again, you know, we're sponsors <coughs> like to say that there are a lot of smart people in this club. How we get people, smart people to share their smartness. How's that? Share their smartness and spread it around. Only benefits all the membership. Okay, special interest groups. Okay, that's sort of the sheet in front of you. Okay, find others who have your interests. Okay, and, and if we can sort of self organize them. Okay, I think that would be a great thing. Obviously, one item that we've already taken care of, okay, is to ex explore more open clubhouse open opportunities more than, uh, more than Fridays. Credit here, W2KDF, okay, who mentioned the word the other day to me, and I put it in this presentation, it's about content. Okay, we were talking about a different topic, okay, but it's about content, okay? If you look at Thursday nights, the thing that might bring people in is that it's about content. Okay, code classes, other things, okay, other reasons to get me to come. How many people said that they were involved, who would want to get involved in a night other than Friday? Anybody remember? I don't remember the number. 20, 20, yeah, 20, he's the president, he remembered this now. He did not see this in advance, okay? Okay, I mean, if we got, what was it, four the first week, we had eight last week, last night, we had six last night, okay? I mean, if we got to 12, we got to 15, we got to 22, that's pretty good, okay, in terms of getting a start. And that's only with members. That's not marketing outside this club. But, uh, so anyway, outreach. Again, again, new members, those who cannot now attend. Okay, uh, we talked about sort of the Fairlawn group. Um, the publicity committee is going to do a mailing to Fairlawn hands who are not involved in this club. And you know what? Fridays, you know, we're open now on Thursdays. Okay, there's another opportunity for you to come. Why don't you stop by? Okay, community outreach. Okay, so it's just telling other people, you know, nearby. Okay, that the club is open and here's what's going on. You know, and also keep in touch with those who are trading down from the club. You know, I guess I always use an example in media is that if you think about your media usage, there are some times that you use media more than others. And there are some times that you trade down. Okay, I don't have a need for buying a car. Okay, so not necessarily me. It's the same thing here with clubs and ham radio. Okay, where my interest waxes and wanes. How's that? Good. Right? That's good. Right? Okay, we need to maintain their interest. Okay, at least identify people who are trading up and people who are trading down. The questions for all of us here in terms of leadership. This is the leadership group because you were interested in not being coming tonight. Okay. So how do we increase hand, hands on with experience, such as more projects? How to create a viable Thursday night activity? What other days might we explore? You've got a sense of that. How do we best utilize the weekends if we do? Okay. There were some suggestions, the fact that Pete BMS, okay, is here every Saturday. Okay, so what do we do? You know, can, can we get Pete to be involved a couple more hours? Okay, on a Saturday, so there is a sort of a Saturday morning session. Okay, you know, at least on VE Saturdays, that type of thing. How do we grow more tech school? There's members and getting more members and getting more tech members and getting more members in general, rather, more airtime. Okay, text is a universal project, a universal problem for one club. But how do you get people who are uh, newly licensed hands more involved in terms of not only getting out of the air, getting involved in the club? You know, just. You know, just in terms of things here, is that my perception is that, and this is again sort of the, the quote unquote itself, is that there's a need for an events chair, you know, in terms of, you know, sort of keeping interest and working with the publicity committee, particularly in terms of the fact that there's a lot of special interest. What do we do to tie events, okay, you know, and, and sort of having somebody coordinating events, you know, for us going forward, or a projects chair, okay, for things such as kit building, experimentation, those things. So sort of we've got a formal process and somebody's sort of watching over. Okay, and then how do we leverage and order, organize around spe special interest topics, which is your, your piece, so, et cetera. Yeah, larger question is who are the future leaders, okay, for the club and how they develop. Okay, you, you always ask for volunteers, but in a lot of cases you gotta ask, recognize, and ask, right? If you're in management, you know that. Okay, what's, and what's marketing look like going forward? Okay, is that, you know, it's been a sort of a marketing plan, quote unquote, um, you know, for us in terms of going from 60 to here, okay, does it need to change? Okay, particularly because people are asking us to say, can you go above 150? Okay, because that's okay. You know, that kind of thing. How does it change? 
I mean, the, the other flip side of that is that, you know, there's been a couple comments about, you know, sort of having, you know, how, do, how do we sort of screen for membership, you know, that type of thing. In a town-sponsored club, you really can't do that. It's, it can't really be discriminatory. Anybody who comes in needs to be a member. Okay, so what do we do in terms of how that marketing, and who fills those roles going forward? I mean, the Pubco's been together now for how long? Four years, five years? Sure. Something like that, I mean, yeah. I mean, it doesn't go on forever. I guess that's the point. Yeah, it just is, you know, it's, it's, it's true. Pardon? It's true. It should. Well, it should, but nothing's forever. Yeah, but there you go. So, anyway, I mean, those are some of the points. So, you know, and then so, sort of, you know, what, in terms of looking at future membership, what was true last year is probably true today. Is that, you know, sort of where's the opportunity pieces? You know, it's hands from Fairlawn and surrounding towns. You know, those who are currently unavailable who can take advantage of Thursdays you know, and or weekends. People who are interested in MCOM and other related groups, okay? Again, this has been tried by a lot of other people. I won't dismiss it. You know, grow interest in racy scenarios and see how that might bring other people in terms of the clubs. Text we've talked about, you know, again, sort of reaching out. Um, Moses in the other day, I mean, waxes eloquently on May Cleveland's. You know, and obviously here, you know, we got involved in STEM, thank you, Steve. You know, and a lot of the things that have gone on there. Okay, but you know, but the question is, is what do we do in terms of getting involved? Yeah, but our makeup is not necessarily tied to things like Arduino, you know, Raspberry Pi. I mean, we don't, you know, there's interest, but there isn't as, as many activities, you know, that sort of tie back into that. Um, you know, and obviously there's, you know, there's the whole other piece in terms of looking at, you know, what's what are sort of the low hanging fruit? I know we talked a little bit about this last year. You know, in terms of looking, the people who tend to walk in the door are not younger people. Okay, and everybody, you know, everybody wishes for, you know, for, for kids who started, how many people here started by over there? Yeah, that type of thing, even in the right? You know, I know I did, okay. But there's fewer of those, okay. When, when you see people walking in the door, I mean, most of the membership here, you know, is still in its 40s and its 50s in terms of when they're joining as new members. You know, the RSG, you know, B model in England has older newcomers, you know, uh, if you follow the ARRL thing, if, you know, when, when Rio was here about two weeks ago, um, you know, talk about lifelong learning, which is a big <coughs> initiative to get more people involved. You know, Men in Sheds is a UK activity. It's just how to get more people in shacks, that type of thing. So, I mean, so like, it's really what we want to do in terms of being able to you know, be a take a look at the full ladder for a second. And Men in Sheds had a totally different part of the Men in Sheds. <laughs> men in Sheds, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it's common, it's a really good label. Yeah, but it's more of a Brit thing. Though. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Brit, it's a Brit, it's a Brit Yeah. You know, one thing that it comes to mind, my image of it was something totally different, but also it's all male. I mean, we're 99.9. Exactly right. Well, we always Thank were. Thank you very much. This. Thank you very much. Sadly enough, yeah. but, you know. <laughs> Juju's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God the camera's pointed only at me. <laughs> so, Ron. <laughs> Uh, we have to put a great deal of stress in setting up an auxiliary for young people. Well, let's hold that thought, okay? Because we're going to have a discussion here coming up in a second. So, But nevertheless, I mean, those are some of the things. Just sort of looking at the data, looking at the comments. Just one last point. We asked how many people said that they would make a voluntary contribution. Oh, how many people here said that? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, the number was 56. Okay, 56 out of 102. Okay, said that they would be willing to make a voluntary contribution. Was it Jim that asked how much? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Here's the possible, you know, obviously the number is easy when you got it. Okay. Okay. At $10, we get $560. Okay, if we asked for $25, we get $1,500. <coughs> and if we got $50 from everybody, we get $2,800. Okay. Brad? What might be interesting is, especially towards the upper end, if the club were to match it, what we could do with that money. Absolutely. That's a whole. Great discussion, okay? Are, you know, we, are we a 501 C3? No, that's a challenge because this is a town sponsored club. Okay, one of the things going forward is that how do you how do you make that? Because there are matching funds yeah. available. Exactly. For exactly. But there but there would be no pushback to say that, you know, if we were if we really had a compelling reason that did community good, right. okay, that type of thing. I would see personally no objection to go to some of the other to some of the major players here, okay, like a Columbia, like a Cuban. You know, Mr. Cupin's grandfather was one of the founders of this club. Okay, he would have no pushback if the answer was right. Okay, in terms of you know, in terms of looking at money, but we need to have a really good, compelling local community to change the culture. Glenn, does the club have a PayPal account? Mm -hmm. yes. That will require opening up another checking account because we want to isolate our checking account, 
and it's going to require extra expenses to open that checking account. Why do you have to separate the funds? This might be an offline discussion. Okay. Okay. This is a work in progress. Okay. As okay. We say. It, it will bring in donations. Okay. I can promise you that from experience. Yes. For places that you would never expect. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. So you know. So again, here, you know, the club is. What's the club need? What's it really want? Yeah, obviously you should be involved in terms of making the donations. If you're looking at some, if we're looking at community good, you know, so how do you get somebody like a Cuban, okay, to help justify the fact that you get them involved in the process and maybe you get more money out of it as opposed to that. Okay, there's a lot of opportunities. Pardon? Part? An ad in our newsletter. Problem is we're not 501. We're not a 501. It's not a donation thing. It's a, it's a sponsorship. The incentive is low. Right? No, that's fine. Right. Just fine. But you, you, you need to have a compelling low. need for what you want to do in the community. Yes. You know, that, you know. A lot of people just assume you're probably one that will give them the taxes of the well. That's right. The only benefit, yeah. the only benefit is you feeling you've done some nice to help people out. There's no other that's right. side benefit. Yeah. And, that's, and that's a larger discussion. Okay. So what gets you over that line? That, 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 that. So. Anyway, I think just one last comment. This was a great survey. Thank you yeah. all for participating. Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.